Hi, welcome back. Let's continue from where we left off in the previous tutorial. Let's start creating the Java source file in the source folder. To I'll change the source folder to mats.source or I can browse and select the folder source that uh, either way uh, then the package and then I would leave it to inherit from uh, object class the rest of the stuff I would leave it as it is and now it would take me to the student class so now we have this class student uh, earlier we were using the mouse to browse to the uh, classes so if I wanted to go to the sprint test class I used to click student test so that's one way of doing it the other way which is very easy is to use the control E or the command E um, it lists down all the active editors and then you can just choose the file which you want to go to and press enter so this is a keyboard shortcut for you to be able to easily switch between files so now I would go back to the test file and now say uh, command one control one and it asked me to create the set method set name string so I'd go ahead and create the set name string I'll leave everything as default as it is right now it doesn't do anything right now that's okay the first thing I want to be able to do is to see a failure of a J unit as long as I have compilation errors I will not be able to do that so I would just go ahead and now see get name is undefined so now I would go to get name, do a control one and say create method. So it now creates a method. The only thing I'm going to change is I know that name is a string. Oh, good. What's a string? We'll come to that a little later. So that's basically what we'll discuss during this tutorial. What is a string and get more idea about it. So I'm going to, we'll discuss that a little later. And now uh, I said equals obviously I didn't do a static import yet so asset equals is defined in org.junit.assert so I have to do a import of that so basically that's what we are doing in here so what we have now is a very simple student test which tests uh, student.set name uh, this is called a string literal so this is a string constant uh, earlier we used a constant called uh, 5 or 25 like these were integer constants which we used in the earlier uh, tutorial of uh, integer constants you don't need double quotes around them because those are those are numbers but for string constants uh, java needs to be able to differentiate between a variable called john and the string constant john so you have to actually put uh, the string constants within double quotes so within double quotes i've created a string constant called John so here what we are doing is a string constant called John okay so now we have created a string constant called John and if I go to the student class I'm using the mouse method um, this is a variable this is what you call an argument so I'm creating an argument to the set name method called string so this is basically uh, the way uh, like what happens is when the student test invokes state John with the value John what happens is the value John gets passed to this variable I would I can better call this as name because it's not just a string but it's actually a name so a name properly represents the concept so I'll call this as name um, now you have uh, the code compiling so let's go ahead and just run as JUnit test okay obviously it fails because we have not coded anything yet but the good thing is at least there's a failure so that shows we are making progress okay let's now go ahead and make this pass so what we are going to do here is actually create a variable called string name uh, this variable stores the name of the student so inside the class what you have is data so the data of a class is what are the member variables which are present in that particular class so this is data or 
you also call this member variables so i want to store the name of the student so what i'm creating here is a string name so basically i'm creating a variable or a member variable here called name and i'm saying the type of this number variable is string now uh, what happens here is when you call set name string what i want to be able to do is actually take the value which is passed into the name variable so i what i would want to take in is the value which is passed to this name variable and put it to this name so i can write name is equal to name but which name is which so this is the name in the method and this is the name in the class so different to differentiate this actually java provides a keyword called this when you say this dot name you are referring to the class instance so the class instance is this so you are when i call something this dot something you are referring always to the member variable so you are always referring to this name so what i'm saying is this not name so what is this is this dot name so this name is equal to the name when i say just name the name represents the value which is passed to that method so uh, the name is the value which is passed to this test method is passed set into the student member variable and then what i want to do i'm using a shortcut called con command d or control d which would delete the entire line i want to remove this to do so i'd remove that and what i want to return back is the name or i can say this dot name also so this basically returns the name of the variable back so whatever is set here will be returned back here and that helps us to make this test pass let's see now whether the test passes wow this is good so basically we have set the name of the method uh, say, set the name of the student as john and i have asserted back that the student dot get name returns me back john so this is basically how i can test now basically i have some piece of code which i can say it's working because my tests are passing um so this is a set name method which actually sets the name to the local variable sorry to a member variable uh, here uh, and now i'm returning the variable back so now um this brings us to an important concept called encapsulation if you look at this string variable if i actually go to the string test class i can actually write something of this kind i don't need to use the uh, get a method but john dot student dot name so i'll be able to access if i type in student dot i don't need to use the student dot get name method but i can directly use student dot name uh, also what we can do is actually say student dot name is equal to uh david so now i can say assert equals david comma student dot name if you look at this what happens let's try running this j unit and see if it succeeds to see if everything our expectations are right perfect so it allows us to do this so one important concept of object oriented programming this is the first concept from object oriented programming that we are discussing and this concept is called encapsulation actually what's happening here is a value of the class is being directly set from outside the class this is not good encapsulation encapsulation says that all the data and the behavior should be present as part of the class you should not expose internal stuff about a class to outside a class that's basically what encapsulation means what is happening here is somebody is able to do something like student not name so that's actually exposing the inter somebody is able to directly say student norm name is equal to david and that breaks the encapsulation concept so what we would do 
is to stop this from happening we have a keyword called private now when i say something is private that basically means that the student name variable is only accessible within the student class anywhere outside the student class i will not be able to you access the student you notice that as soon as i make this variable private there are compilation errors because this is a student name now it says student name is not visible because it's private it's supposed to be belonging to that class i should not be able to directly use the variable i should if i want anything from this class student i should be able to access it only using the keyword like using a method like a set name or a get name that would and ensure that the variable is properly encapsulated within the class so now uh, obviously i'll not be able to do this anymore because uh, the name is now private so i'll go ahead and remove these lines of code i use the shortcut t command d or control d so i use that and do the removal of the statement so now the name is properly encapsulated into this class let's discuss more about encapsulation in the next tutorial we are creating more videos as we speak and if you want to stay updated don't forget to click the subscribe button if you like this video please give us a thumbs up and feel free to share this video thanks for watching until next time bye